You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how. I mean, funny like a clown. You know, I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man that does the spare time of this time is never been. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome back to Frame by Frame. Let's go pump it up a bit. There we go. Pump up the value. Are we pump close enough? I, I think we're close the... enough. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Let's just pump that. That's it. Yeah. Get closer, Andy. Come on. Get intimate. Oh. <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> you can put the music in after. You don't have to do that. Oh. <laughs> the magic of editing. I'll tell you what, the last few podcasts, I think since um, since Mad Max, I've, I've, I've got like a, like a um, the porno soundtrack involved in every single episode yeah, so yeah. far. It seems to be a bit of a, a handy drop in. So, so it needs to keep coming back. It needs, because it's funny. But then that needs the letter, you know, the Marvin Gaye. Well, 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 well. That does, yeah. Let's which, get it on. which we've used before as well. Which is, I think, well, when did we use that one? I think it was a cocktail episode. Oh, right, yeah, it would have yeah. been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, I, just, I, just, I just think it's fun to put these little sound bites in because uh, it works. Yeah. It works for me. So, how are you? I'm good, yeah, not bad. Watched any interesting films lately? Outside of what we're going to talk about? Anything? Actually, I've catch- been watching um, Last Man on Earth. Have you heard of this? Oh, is that the David Bowie thing? No, that's, that's the, the man who fell from it. Oh, fell to earth. That's something else. But it's a, it's like a comedy series where um, it just starts with this guy who's driving around um, America, and you just see him go into a certain like town, state, or whatever, and he's got like a megaphone, and he's like, "Hello, is anyone there?" And it, so he's the last man on earth. So it's kind of like Omega Man. Yeah, but it's comedy. It's funny. <laughs> Man on Earth premieres March 1st on Fox. Yes! So um, he ends up going to his hometown, into his apartment. Looks awful. So he goes into this massive uh, mansion. And um, yeah, so essentially it's this he needs, he's just on his own. And um, you know, there's a part where he's watching like Castaways. Like, don't be stupid, Tom Hanks. That doesn't, I don't need a ball. I'm fine, you know. And then the next scene. He's in a pub with balls all around him, you know, there's like Kev, Steve, Bob, you know, all these people and he's trying to play pool and stuff and he sort of loses it. But towards the end of the first episode, um, he sees like a fire. So he rushes to it and um, he, he, there's a girl there and he faints and he has this vision of this beautiful woman who, and he starts kissing, he comes around and she's this really annoying woman yeah. and um, he can't stand her, but he's really horny. That's yeah. Yeah. So um, it's weird because so, everything resonates with this whole the whole fantasy that everybody kind of has. What it would be like to be the last person on the earth. Well, yeah, because at first he's like getting the, all these posh cars and crashing them into each other, having a real fun time, and then it's like two months later and he's a wreck. You know, <laughs> his whole mansion's a wreck. He cuts a, a hole in a diving board at a pool so he can take a poo and he calls it his shit pool <laughs> because they've obviously got no running water. You know what I mean? So anyway, <laughs> this this girl, it, it's her mission. She thinks them two of the only ones that are left after this virus. You don't know what the virus is. The to repopulate right. the species, and um, <laughs> so. Fair. But she won't have sex with them until they're married. So they have this like really <sighs> weird marriage, and then they have some. <laughs> and then it's they got have, a spoiler alert, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So they have, <laughs> screw it. So they have sort of like weird sex in it, where she's just like sits on him. But doesn't do anything, just talks weird at him <laughs> and he just like this there and it was really funny. But towards the end of like that, the the coming away from just getting married and um oh no, sorry, doing something else. And then this big limo goes in front of him and he crashes into this limo. 
and um, they look at, and then this really hot girl gets out, which is really cool. And he's thinking, oh, damn. And then, they, but you stuck with this you're girl, married. and that's the thing. <laughs> I think he's the only man alive, you know. Yeah. I've only got a few episodes into it, but it was really, it's funny. It's think, really good. I mean, everybody has that fantasy. I mean, I, I have. I've always thought, what would it be like to be the only one alive? And I've kind of like finessed it over the years, you know. It's one of those things you think about before you go to bed. I'm sure you do the same, right? I always think about if ever. if I was the last person, who would I like to actually have in my world? It's kind of, it's always the weirdest things, but but then you start to think, oh, I don't want to have to grow food, so let's just have this kind of weird alien uh, influence where there's a supermarket, and every day, the, everything's just fresh. Bill is trying to make the best of it. He starts to do a bunch of weird things, like make a margarita pool. Most people take for granted how things work. This show really has fun with that. You turn on a faucet and water comes out. You have no idea how that works though. When it really boils down to it, you have no idea what to do. So for a lazy guy like me, I'm not gonna get a bunch of stuff going again. I'm just gonna not live off the land, but live off the stores. Baby's back. Yeah, um, that should be your new slogan. The baby's back. <laughs> it's like forget Sigourney Weaver and the bitch. Yeah, um, literally is, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking and the baby is back. Uh, but I, th I think he might be waking up soon. But I have set up some areas over there for him to play with. Um, should he wake up yeah, prematurely? Cool. I'm just gonna wait. Know. We're gonna wait for him to cry. Um, <laughs> But it's just really, there's this really funny bit where his wife comes back and no, he sorry, he walks into the house and he bursts into tears, and um, she, she's like, "Oh my God, what's wrong?" He said, "Well, I've just been thinking, and it's the most awful thing." And he's just, he's like, "What? What is it?" Well, the thing is, is we can't have our babies having sex with each other, so I'm going to have to have sex with her as well. He's just putting it on, you know what I mean, just so we could have sex with her, because it looks like it'd be better, you know. It's going to have to be a polygamous marriage. In, in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like Mormons. Well, I could really use some rest. Where should I stay? Oh, you should probably stay right here, right? You know, it's probably good to have somebody watching over you in case you got a concussion or something. I, I don't have a concussion. <laughs> That's what people always say when they got a little concussion brewing. I definitely don't have one. Think about it. <clears throat> So can I just take any house or? Well, this one's Phil's and mine's the one across the street with the broken door. <laughs> yeah. Phil broke it. I'm gonna fix your door, Carol. <laughs> well, he's not very handy, so I'm not gonna hold my breast. Breath. Why would I hold my breath? I would die. Carol, why would you hold your breast? It's oh, holding no. your breath because there's danger if you hold your breath. I wouldn't, that's what I'm saying. So the house with the broken door is yours. Yeah. But every other one is available. I would avoid the white one because Phil uses the pool as a toilet. Carol. What? It's the truth. You know, she just got here. It's. But the toilet pool's the first thing you showed me. But yeah, but you don't have to tell her. To, you know okay, the. Okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have put Phil's business out on the streets. But yeah. it's funny, so I recommend it. It's oh, funny. what's it called again? Uh, Last Man Alive. Last Man Alive. But you know, you're talking about the Last Man Alive. You know who isn't alive anymore? Oh no. That's not how you introduce this. <laughs> That's not how you do this. Uh, but then, then again, but then again, you know, you know, we, we can't just all be morose about it. I mean, um, the guy had a sense of humor, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, so this last couple of days. A tragic news, yeah, that Wes Craven has sadly passed away. And he died, um, well, you could say he died young, 76, and uh, it was a uh, cancer. Oh, was it? I didn't know we had yeah, that. brain cancer, which oh. is, yeah, one of those things that I have no idea about, really, um, what, how it actually works. But, um, but um, yeah. I heard you smell rubber. Really? There's a musician, because you know how paranoid I am. I uh, listened <sighs> to the radio, and um, it came on the radio that he's, when he was playing piano, I forgot what the musician is now, you probably able to find out, but he was playing piano and he could smell rubber. Well, he was playing like a gig, and he was like, oh, don't know what that is. And apparently when you've got a brain tumour, one of the symptoms, you can smell rubber everywhere you went. So shortly after that, everywhere I went, I could smell rubber. Yeah. What kind of rubber? I mean, are you talking about 
like um, I think like burning rubber, tire rubber, yeah, burning yeah, that rubber, kind of that kind of thing. Like a yeah. condom. <laughs> <laughs> I smell condoms everywhere. <laughs> That's like <a> <laughs> Um But yeah, I mean, it's it's you know it's tragic news. It is, but um, unfortunately, you know, it, it it seems to be that since we've had this podcast, quite a few uh, well-known filmmakers, actors, um, well, just just generally people. <laughs> I've just been passing away, and uh, I don't we, th- I, we, we I, tend to like to pause. And, and yeah, absolutely. I don't think we're to blame, though. We're not. No, for, no, no. For the deaths. It's not that, but I, I, it's kind of. I kind of feel as though that our podcast has been quite timely because a lot of yeah, yeah. big, um, big stars who. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those weird things that uh, we seem to be at a bit of a, a t- an interesting time for the. Uh, the, the 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 mainly the, the mortality of uh, the mortality of the post studio system mm. mainly um, you know and, and it's it's you know it's not old Hollywood now it's 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 getting closer and closer and uh, uh, I mean Wes Craven really didn't come to prominence until the early seventies yeah, well it's it's hard to not underestimate the impact he actually had on horror yeah. cinema. And I, I a... think he's been a little bit overstepped because of uh, maybe because of uh, fans kind of holding on to him in the um, Nightmare on Elm Street zone. But um, really, his his influence has been quite profound. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have a little talk about that today. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, as a, as a coincidence, I got um, a message off Stephen just saying that I've just watched the Last House on the Left. This was a few days before. Just a he few passed. days before he died, yeah, and because um, we were talking about it, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. And um, it was like a revenge sort of rape thing, was not it? Yeah, it? yeah, exactly that. Yeah. And so I watched it again, straight after. Yeah, yeah, after you told me, so you'd watched it the day before, then I watched it, and then the mm. day after he died, it was very bizarre. Yeah, here's the trailer. Marie and her friend. I feel like a woman for the first time in my life. Two girls from the suburbs going to the city to have a good time. Oh, uh, this is my roommate, Sam. Hi, girls. This is my sister, uh, Martha. Uh, Martha, these girls, uh, you know, want to buy some grass. Four killers on the loose, also looking for a good time. And the road. They meet in the last house on the left. What began as a birthday party ends as a nightmare. I want to give you something. I don't want that. It's worth a lot. I don't want that. I want to be your friend. Oh, you want to get free. I want to be your friend. Are you all right? Yeah. Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. (gasps) Just what did happen in the last house on the left? Dr. Collingwood lived there. Are you sure we're not going to put you folks in any trouble? Oh, nonsense. Our home is yours. His wife lived there. I've always dreamed of a man who could take me easily. So did their daughter, Marie. They all lived there. Junior. To avoid fainting, Keep repeating to yourself, it's only a movie, only a movie, only a movie, only a movie. Last house on the left. Okay, so yeah. Good trip, good trip. Good tra- <laughs> it's a good trip. Tra- <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it's it's so a, that's his first film. It's his first. It was his first official. I mean, he did a documentary before then. Mm. Um, I can't remember the subject matter now. I should know. It was it. Um, I don't. Know. I think it might have been something erotic. Bah! Cut that out. But uh, he he dabbled in um, in several areas. I mean, the, the, if you look at the early history of Wes Craven, he um, his family were Baptists, right? And so um, cinema was forbidden. It was one of those weird um, f- things where um, he had to sneak in to watch films, and uh, so he kind of was. Um, it was a forbidden thing, so it was something that he gravitated towards. Quite, you know, obviously as, yeah. as a kid, you if you if something's forbidden, you want to 
push towards it. So luckily he um, he found his way into. Uh, I think he did a bit of acting to begin with as well. He's not just just a director. Um, he's a kind of a, an all rounder as well. But um, fo his focus mainly has been directing since um, Last House on the Left. Mm. And um, yeah, he uh, had a couple of breaks with uh, a few people at the Chap the Chaplin Studios or Cha Chapin Studios, not Chaplin Chapin Studios, and it was Sean Cunningham, I think, who uh, who uh, helped him develop and produce Last House on the Left. Right. So, but what a movie! Yeah, it's it's kind of odd because it's not completely. Uh, it's that there's some there's something black comedy about it. It's that the music that's used, but it's mixed in with with the 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 kind of worst subject matter that a woman can actually uh, in, be involved with, mm. uh, and I'm to particular a woman because this is this is purely about uh, male and and one female predator, yeah. who are you know, who you know a couple of girls fall into their uh, into their apartment one day one night and uh, that's it plan goes ahead let's rape and kill them yeah but it's just an unfortunate circumstance that the whole film kind of has this this beautiful upbeat kind of 70s iconic music soundtrack and it's kind of it's kind of there's a lot of juxtaposition it's like yeah well you know, do you think without that it'd be too difficult to watch the film it probably would have been it would have been like um, Stray Dogs yeah it would have been like um, Straw Dogs Straw Dogs yeah Stray, <laughs> stray Dogs <laughs> yeah I, I have, Stray Dogs are difficult to look at well. <laughs> yeah. yeah Straw Dogs which, which in a way actually when she, when that scene happened in Straw Dogs there was a, a kind of a romantic well that's the thing isn't happened. it though because there's that contention that she was she's enjoying, enjoying it because it. it was her ex-boyfriend who did it. Yeah, yeah, it was some somebody of a of a from a past who was, yeah. uh, was involved in it. So, but the, with this one, there, there was interesting juxtaposition straight from the from the very start when they're in in the apartment and they're being held at knife point. Um, they cut to the parents who are trying to set up a party for yeah. her. It was her 18th, and uh, you know, and and, and they were kind of like making a. I think they were making cake. Yeah, that's the, so and it was exciting, and th th you go. Well, that's that very to that. that's clever, brilliant filmmaking because of like the reality of life. Of we're so excited, we're throwing this party for our daughter. We're totally ignorant to the fact that she's being held at knife point yeah. somewhere, which is kind like, of how, you know, life, how is. life is. You know the parallels of life. You know, uh, it's it's like yeah. I mean, we we. We have those kind of things happen in, in real life where you're celebrating something and then you get on the phone later on and find out that someone's just died. It, it yeah, happens. Wes. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Wes. Yeah, I but it's, you know, but uh, it's 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 it's, it's a very. It, I didn't feel that awkward watching it though. No, it's like the scenes when they they took them out. You know, it it, it, it kind of yeah. I suppose in today. You'd see a lot more than you see. Yeah. You the, know, it's um, when she's being raped. Yeah. The, especially the one outside. It's just that shot on the face, isn't it? Yes. Where yeah. she's sort of like just got her head to one side. And the only bit I found a little bit disturbing is when he finished, he pulls off a bit of his spit stuck to her face. Yeah. And he pulls yeah. Away. I found that a bit icky and yeah, that, that's sick, kind of, sickening, you know. That's the thing you can imagine that, that would stay with them. The, 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 the breath and everything you kind of you kind of understand that from an outside perspective you'd never mm. be able to internalize it be able to be able to figure that out how that feels yeah but it's um it was definitely a definitely a strong message film very strong I mean that uh, girls need to be careful I mean I think this is the, the era just after the, the the 60s where everybody's exploring this freedom and liberty and like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where they're just going across country and they're okay to pick up, pick up hitchhikers, you know, these girls feel it's okay to just go around the city. Um, yeah, just go to a random random guy who lets them, who says we've got grass at our apartment. Yeah, come on in. You do, that, yeah, uh, yeah it's another, a liberty. And another thing, to say, I, I, I'm not, a, I'm not a woman. No, right, obviously, but. I feel that there'd be some sort of because there's a woman in the gang, so you'd feel a little bit more protect. Well, she's there, so we're fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird because it, 
keep putting her in there changed the dynamic completely. Yeah. I mean, if 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 she wasn't there, then it would have been more sick. Yeah, and but, I reckon it would have been a little bit more unrealistic to for her to go. Yeah, okay, we'll come. Because you got a girl there, so you think, oh yeah, we're fine. But if there's no girl, you go, I'm not going to go in a, an apartment yeah. with three guys. Yeah, true, exactly. But they didn't know she was in there when they first went That's in. True, so yeah. there's still a guy at the door yeah, yeah, coming yeah. to the apartment. Um, but seeing her st- would, 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 yeah, send them, put, put them back on, um, you know, off guard again. So. See, if I was a conservative, I'd probably be thinking, well, it's their own stupid fault for going in there. But I'm not. No, no. It's I'm not a, conservative, so I would actually say that anyone should be able to go wherever they want without fear of rape. Yeah, but, you know. that, that's exactly true. I mean, you can't blame you can't blame uh, people for wanting to be somewhere. Mm. It's like you know, why was that girl walking through the park? You know, because that's where she was entitled to be. She had a right to be. You know, and and you know, yeah. just because somebody jumped out from the bushes. That's the problem, not her walking through the oh, park. Absolutely. At well, night. she was wearing a short skirt. Women shouldn't dress like that. They should be able to. Anyone should be able to walk around butt naked and not yeah. be in fear. And they shouldn't put bullets in guns and knives. Shouldn't be sharp. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's that. It's that whole. You oh, know, only spoons. Things shouldn't. Yeah, we should only use spoons and chainsaws. Should be locked up. Yeah. You know, not people. Or <laughs> instead of like having a saw around it to chainsaw, just spoons. <laughs> it's just really fun. So but instead slow. of closing things down, it just sort of like gives them a real nice shine. Have you seen? Yeah, it, what, what amuses me is that shops actually have Fisher Price chainsaws. <laughs> have you seen these Fisher Price chainsaws? I'm like, well, why would any child want to run around with a chainsaw? Joshy, what have you, you got? Press, press this one. No, the other one. Is it yours? Is it a quick, toy? Quick, quicker. Press, press. It's a toy one. No, the other one. And not only that, they say, oh, what's my chainsaw toy? It doesn't matter, I'll use Dad's. <laughs> yes! Goodbye, Lim. <laughs> Goodbye, Lim. I mean, um, there's been a viral video, actually, this week, uh, speaking of uh, limbs, where that this dad puts a fake arm and a child comes up with um, an, what was it, a, a, something, a, chain, child, a childish chainsaw, a baby chainsaw, <laughs> and he thinks he's chopped off his dad's arm. And he's standing there, he's like, <laughs> really shocked and stunned and, and upset. And I'm thinking, well, this isn't funny. No. That's kind of cruel, you know, so... Uh, Actually, sort of on the subject of rape, did you watch the video of that, that guy who basically pretended to be someone who wasn't on Facebook to get young girls to meet up with him? He, he, he cleared it with the family. Uh, and all the family uh, said to him, was like, this is actually quite related, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And all the family said to him, no, try it. There is no way our kid will fall for that and on every occasion at one point a 12 year old girl he got to come out the house and get into his car but the moment they got in the back of the car the parents are there I'm like what the hell are you doing you know and it was all he got young yeah. girls but pretend, he's pretending to be like he's like a 30 year old so man. basically he clears it with the parents it's like an, ex- it's like it's a, a, an, an experiment, experiment to, to see if I can get your if your kid will yeah. fall for this rubbish on Facebook and then come and yeah I'm but they think me. no way they're going to do yeah, it. But we, yeah. brought, we we brought our kids up right. No way they'll do that. And I, I'm not sure if it, you see yeah. about four versions of it. The last one, poor kid, she it, it, she'll never do it again. She gets in the van and everyone's got masks on and they all grab her and she screams and the people with the masks on are actually her parents. That's freaking insane. Yeah, that's it's it is very relative. I mean, this is kind of the weird society that we live in. That for one thing. Uh, parents think that their children are are safe because they bring them up right but there's no right in bringing up well there is wrong but there's no yeah. right there's very much a very much there's definitely a wrong way to bring up but you can't say that you're you've brought up a child right it's just so much society is too much, so much yeah there's too influence. much to influence yeah, yeah exactly no parent can have full control over what a child does and thinks and believes so i just think facebook's gonna be outlawed in our house
Fall of the West Craven's next film. So, yeah, sorry, we, we decided to But we are kind of talking relevant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, his next film. Was it The Hills Have Eyes? I believe so, yeah. And he, um, he, he had... Uh, the film is pretty much all about that guy. Michael Berryman. That's the one, Pluto. Michael Barrymore. Michael Barrymore is uh, Pluto, this deformed guy. Yeah. Who is... Uh, um, but he's not... The, the thing is... It's like with the, you know, he's he's basically, he's remembered by his face, not remembered by his name. It's like the guy in, in Ghost, who was on the train. Get off my train. Get off my train. He's in everything that requires a gothic element to it. He was. Yeah. He was. He's dead now, unfortunately. But, but yeah, um, here we have, we have this guy um, who came into the audition studio. He didn't say anything, didn't do anything. They just looked at him and said, right, he's in the movie. Yeah, poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> we, yeah. we need inbred people yeah. that he live. Doesn't, he doesn't even need makeup. They basically said he does not even need makeup. This guy looks... Yeah, and it's, it's basically cinema um, in the 60s and 70s kind of became the uh, let's, let's take people out of the freak shows and the circuses and put them on uh, movies because mm. they, they will be our poster boys. So in a way, I kind of feel sorry that you know, that that's kind of the way that is. Um, but um, yeah, it was quite a quite a strong cast. That um, uh, D. Wallace is in there. Didn't realize. But uh, you you've seen this movie. I haven't. Have you not seen it? No. People go on holiday. The the they get what? tortured. Okay, and they go on holiday where? Is it kind of like they're going through I think the Rockies? Of yeah, Arizona? I think they're going through the Rockies. If I remember rightly, it's a long time since I've seen it. But yeah, I think. They're, they just sort of pitch tent on the way to California. Yeah, so they just sort of pitch up one night and they're there. And I've, the, the actual remake is more in my head because I watched that after I've seen that. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's and a the similar thing, is, thing where all these sort of inbred and you start torturing them and killing them. And I think there's another rape involved. <laughs> loves, a, loves a good old rape early Wes Craven did. Yeah, I, I think he's. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to tell where his where his thoughts are behind all that. You know, he's a fan of the horror genre, but he's also seems to be quite interested in putting difficult subject matter on screen. Mm. Um, but by this time, I think we'd had um, we'd had a lot of things that were doing, had explored that. Yeah. Um, you know, we had The Exorcist. We already had uh, Straw Dogs, I think, by that time. Um, it's 1977, so we had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All these films where social responsibilities and liberties have already been kind of tested. So 1977, he brings this out. I suppose that it, had this been explored before, the idea of like an inbred... F I suppose it has, yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is an inbred family, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, you know, Wes Craven directed and wrote it. Um um, Again, though, it's another, you know, harrowing film. Yeah, he just liked to go for that harrowing. I suppose as a young director trying to make a name for yourself, if you make films as disturbing as possible, mm. you are getting that name for yourself, aren't you? And he did, and I think that this is his need to kind of find ways into the industry again to, to keep it going. I mean, in the 70s, there wasn't really... The, the, the structure was only just developing... Yeah. Um, I mean, all the all the mavericks from the early seventies were finally building studios by seventy seven and building up their empires, quite literally. In George Lucas's, um, you know, this was the start of his empire right now. But yeah, but from you know very early on, it was all it was never just uh, it was Wes Craven's blah blah blah. Yeah, it was there, never you know. There was always an authorship. Yeah, and John Carpenter continued that. With, yeah, with John all Carpenter's his blah. You know. Yeah, people like to have that, but now. You know, you, you 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 rarely see that. You know, you don't see Michael Bay's Transformers. Yeah, it's just a yeah, Michael yeah, Bay yeah. film. Yeah. It's not Michael Bay's Transformers. Thank God. Well, it is. Michael he, Bay. he should own for, own up for it. Okay, so then um, I believe. Yeah, it's not the bit. I think we're going to go straight to the uh, the mother of all um, Wes Craven movies, and um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, which. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I've talked about it several times with a fan, super yeah. fan, um, to which I will add links to uh, those those interviews, kind of low quality phone interviews. But um, and it's 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 a weird one that because it changed the idea of what horror is. It, I think the idea of the Nightmare on Elm Street is fantastic. Yes, something that attacks your dreams. Yeah, which is. That's, that's a frightening idea. It is, yeah. Scared yeah. to fall asleep is a frightening idea. So that's good. 
And I think Freddy is an iconic horror character, definitely. Character, you know and Robert I mean? Englund really put his love into oh, he did. that. And, he did. Uh, and the, yeah, Wes Craven really felt that the subject was worth exploring. Yeah. The kids of Elm Street don't know it yet, but something is coming to get them. There's something out there, isn't there? You could just see cuts happen. What did that, Lieutenant? I don't know. There's a coroner got to say. He's in the jar and puking since he saw it. You're gonna kill me for sure. Did you do it? There was somebody else there. He was locked in a room with a girl who went in alive and came out in a rubber bag. No one knows where it came from or who it will visit next. Nancy, there's something wrong with you. You're imagining things. Nightmare on Elm Street. Ah! Do you believe in the boogeyman? No. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. She's the only one who can stop it. If she fails, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. No one will survive. Help me, please! Help! Where are you? From Wes Craven, director of The Hills Have Eyes and Last House on the Left. A new masterpiece in fantasy terror, Nightmare on Elm Street. I like um, such an in-joke in Scream when um, it's at the very beginning, you know, Drew Barrymore is on the phone to him and he's like, do you like scary movies and that thing? He's like, what do you like? Because I like Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, Freddy. Yeah, I like the first one. The others are rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice little wooden joke. I think Wes Craven one. is kind of aware of of what he does and how it works. And um, did he direct all of them? Nightmare on Elm Street. I yeah. think he just did the first one, and that was it. Yeah. Oh you no, know, he did Wes Craven's New Nightmare, didn't he? He did. Yeah. So he kind of regained control, and I thought but that, that was actually very good. It was still better. It was because a, it was metafiction, and I enjoyed was, enjoying me- in, in exploring the metafiction. Because wasn't the something. wasn't Freddy after the actual characters? Of yeah, he was actually act, after the actors. So yeah, he- yeah. Heather Le- 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 Lemon Camp, <laughs> Michael Barrymore, <laughs> Michael Barrymore. No, no. Um, yeah, I can't remember her, her name now, but she she was really good in the first film. I thought she held up quite well. Yeah, um, and again, there's always a very Johnny Depp. Oh yeah, Johnny Depp had the, was a bit, the best yeah. death in it. Yeah, it was when pretty. Good. Sucked into the bed and then splattered against the ceiling. Yeah, I think. I, 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 yeah, he was flinging all over, but. You know, but in his dream he's all over the place. But he's just you just see the cut come on and run it on the bed and then when he hits the bed it's just blood everywhere and yeah. stuff. Very Stanley Kubrick um reference for shining. But yeah. yeah. But it was it was good. No, it's a very good film. And uh, it's still got that sexual violence about it, you know, when she's in the bath and the yeah. hand comes out between the legs. Yeah, so you're kinda of harking back to Last House on the Left and the, the rape scene in Hills of Highs. Yeah, so. and obviously he was a Child rapist, wasn't he, Freddy? Oh, you say Wes Craven was? No, no, no. <laughs> Freddy was, yeah. He um he was burnt alive in a in a, you know all, all the community. Yeah, who, because of what yeah, they he did, and, killed uh, him, and um, yeah, which is kind of an interesting backstory because you know he's like the worst person ever. But he's based on a reality and then transformed into this super the supernatural entity that is Freddy Krueger, mm-hmm. um, who is iconic because of his his sweater iconic yeah. because of this hand and his hat which were all kind of elements of Wes Craven's own ideas of of scary things and uh, you know it's kind of all different parts kind of just came in like a bricolage of of mm. textures and I think that that worked really well for the first film yeah I love how like the teenagers turn the table on him yes you know, uh, stalking him yeah, in their dreams. Yeah, exactly. And they bring him into the reality, the real world. I love that with the sledgehammer that comes down and just boom into his stomach and stuff. I love all that. And in true Friday the Thirteenth um, Halloween fashion, you know, it's, the, the nightmare is not over. No, because he likes to pull rubber people through windows. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it was. It was kind of like you know you, when you end the scene in the movie you 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 leave people with an impression yeah and that that yeah that could have been a little bit, that could have been a little bit more uh 
based on reality. But um, yeah, but then again, what can you do? But I mean, it, it also built around this idea. I mean, this was just after Poltergeist as well, this mm. movie, 1984, was it, this movie? Um, so they, the idea of children singing in a chorus, which harks back to the innocence, of course, um, where children singing has become kind of spooky and creepy. Yeah. Um, like in Poltergeist. And um, yeah, I, I kind of found that effective. Mm. Always effective. But then, of there, course. Yeah, there's something crude. Because it's all slow motion, isn't it? And one, two, Freddy's coming Come for you. you. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, grab a crucifix. Seven, eight, John Michael stay. Barrymore. Is late. <laughs> yes, yeah. Send your food back. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I, the first film's great. It yeah. is, but but the, the legacy, it just like <laughs> all franchises, it just went into. I think that, that and I and I think I identified this while talking to Matt that uh, the one thing about Freddy Krueger that he was frightening in that first film. Yeah. But the thing is, once you see something in its full form, like in Alien, what, as soon as you start seeing the alien in its full form, there it is. You know what it is. The dude you in the see suit. It. Yeah. Dude in the suit. You kind of lose that fear it, um, of course I think the fear of not seeing holds up a lot longer and a lot stronger um, than actually having this character who not only is do you see the full vision of him mm. the full spectre but you also have the personality, the humour uh, the um, uh, it takes away the kind of suspense from him, uh, it you know, does but I suppose in the dream state, Freddy could be whatever he wanted to be, couldn't he? That's true, and that that they kind of took that. Um, um, what's his name? The dude who likes to do a Cronenberg. Okay. Kind of, there was a kind of a Cronenberg slash Carpenter element that was yeah. squashed together, where he was morphed into different things. But I mean, yeah, I mean that, that's that is. I think the Freddy Krueger series the Nightmare on Elm Street series is a fun thing to explore and, and of course fans really really are so hyped and I think the fandom of it is such a strong tight fandom yeah um, as I've I've explored already um, that you can't you can understand why but yeah to me I'm, I'm not really that much of a, a, a fan of it I think it was kind of like yeah yeah, exactly. I've seen the first. I've seen them all, and the first one is a film I really like. I don't go back to it that often. I don't no. go back to like I go back to Halloween and things I like don't that. Don't feel. Yeah, I think I used to when I was younger, but now I'm kind of like I. I want the ambiguous. I want the mystery, and mm. and just you know, all you do is like uh, you turn it on and you just think, okay, I'm waiting for Freddy. There he is. Yeah, it's twenty yeah. minutes in. And he's fully there, and okay. I'm done. And again, and we know why Freddy. You know, Freddy was this horrible person. They killed him, and now he's preying on people because they killed him. You know all the backstory. <clears throat> yeah. There's nothing left to the imagination. So just what imaginative way can these teenagers get killed this time? Yeah, and how how can they le uh, group up to to, to fight it? You yeah, know, they, exactly. they kind of made it a league of of dream, um, so, it, dream warriors. Wasn't yeah. It? But, uh, <sighs> Do you remember the Dokken song? Dream Warriors, no. don't want to dream no more. It's on the credits <laughs> at the end by Dokken, Dream Warriors it's called. It's such a cheesy 80s metal song. Oh, we're the Dream Warriors, don't want to dream no more. So A Nightmare on Elm Street, of course, it has its place. But I think it does appeal to more younger teenager. Like, it's, it's every... Nightmare on Elm Street film after the first one is just essentially a remake of the first one. It is, Apart yeah. from, like you said, Wes Craven's new Nightmare where it becomes a bit more meta. Yeah, and I I did enjoy that because of that, because they actually f focused on the filmmakers. Mm. And I, I think I like that film within a film kind of aspect that um, look at look at the, uh, look at yourself. And it's, a, it's a good angle. I think it was a I good angle. I was going to say, yeah, it's a filmmaker thinking outside the box, thinking, well, we've had hundreds not hundreds but we've had a few of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street how can I do something different with it Bob Shea the head of New Line Cinema plays himself here trying to sell the idea to the actress the fans you know the fans God bless them they're clamoring for more I guess evil never dies right anyhow a few weeks ago I got a call from Wes and he pitched me this really exciting idea and I started thinking who better to resurrect Freddy 
than his creator. And veteran thriller maker Wes Craven, who directed that original film, thinks he knows how the supernatural is linked to the cinematic. Why me? Well, uh, dramatically speaking, it makes perfect sense. You played Nancy, after all, and you were the first to humiliate him, defeat him. That was Nancy, Wes. It's not me. Yeah, but it was you that gave Nancy her strength. So, in order to get out, he's got to come through you. And it's inevitable that he's going to try to do that at your most vulnerable points. Wes Craven's new nightmare is the first horror movie that is actually about the frequently asked question, don't the people who make these films ever ask themselves about the effect the films have? It's very intriguing the way the film dances back and forth across the line between fantasy and reality. On the one hand, it's in the nightmare on Elm Street tradition with frightening dream sequences using scary special effects. And on the other hand, it's a look behind the scenes of Hollywood. It's smart, it's scary, and it's curiously thought-provoking. It didn't provoke a single thought in my oh, head. Come, come, no, come. no, no, no. I, no. Roger, they put in these people who you and I know, and so it's kind of can't be fun to see them uh, in their real life uh, roles on the screen. But the, at the core level, this is a mad slasher movie with Freddy, who I have never enjoyed as a villain, and I don't enjoy him here. I, I, it's just the same old bloodletting with new it's actors It's too bad surrounding. that the movie didn't provoke a couple of more thoughts in your Go head. Ahead. Yeah, because I, I think he, he enjoyed it. He liked it a lot. He cared about it a lot. Freddy versus Jason. Place your bets. Again, it's the same with The Exorcist, it's the same with, with any kind of horror, generally horror franchise, where if somebody takes it, they think they know what they're doing with it, and then they just, it's just a cash in. Yeah, because they did, a, again, a remake yeah. of The Nightmare on Elm Street, and it was dreadful. But then there's no Robert Englund, and I, I, I think I do admire Robert Englund because he is not only um, somebody who really has taken to heart this character of Freddy Krueger, but he's involvement with the fans. I mean, not there's not one single picture of a Freddy Krueger fan who has not been taken, uh, had a photo taken with Robert Englund. Oh, He's great. that much of a giver. Uh, and I know that you know, conventions also pay him to do this, and he's pretty much living off that, but... It's still, it's yeah. still, uh, you know. It's at a point now with Robert England, England, or whatever you say, his bloody name, um, <laughs> that if I, if I put like a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Robert Wales, Bobby Wales. <laughs> so if I ever put like um, a film, you know, like a horror film that's just come out, and then he's in it, and I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be rubbish. <laughs> Unfortunately, he just turns yeah. up for like B movie horrors, doesn't he? Oh. That's where he gets paid. That and conventions. Was it dial one nine seven or four two? <laughs> yeah, it. there was um, zombie strippers. Zombie he was strippers. in that. He was like the owner of the club, and all these yeah. strippers become zombies. And that's As that's it. Yeah, name, you know, he's not really a, 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 a box office draw. But that's the thing. Yeah. If he if you try to put him in something big. And it, it's the it's the whole William Shatner thing. It's it weren't T, T. J. Hooker. It was Will. It was Kirk. So if he, he's in a big film, it's it's oh, that's Freddy. That's Freddy in that film. It's not. He becomes more than himself. <laughs> but he becomes some, the character. You exactly. Know? But sometimes I, I think it works in later in life where they're bitter and older. And I think that that's the thing about Robert Englund, that he's, he doesn't seem to be seeking that renaissance period where he's able to break through that and, you know, be Oscar nominated for something that is profound. Like, um, I mean, I can imagine him um, having the same kind of uh, renaissance period as, um, oh, what's the guy, J J.D. Lang? He did the 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 drumming film thing where he's hitting the kid. And oh to, yeah, uh, Jay oh, Simmons. Simmons, yeah. I mean, he he's been he's been an actor a long time. Yeah, he's been acting for a long time, and he's he's had a lot of smaller roles. But th this one was his breakthrough, uh, because I could see Robert Englund of doing that. You know, something if like that. If he wants that. to, I think he might be just happy with his lot in life. But then know? exactly, you know, people then start to think, well, we you know, you don't want to expect anything much more than what he is and uh, he, otherwise he wouldn't be there for his fans anymore yeah. so that's it that's where he is we only get so many great classic stories that's what separates us from the animals are the stories we tell and Nightmare on Elm Street by Wes Craven is just a great goddamn story I can't overemphasize how important Wes Craven is in my life I think back you know, he's given me this role of a lifetime. I'm, if if I never work again, I can kind of die happy that I played a role that is so important in American cinema. Well, Freddie's been very, very good to me, and 
Wes taught me to respect the genre, and uh, I'm glad I listened. You know, when I die, it'll be, uh, you know, the obituary, probably best known for inventing Freddy Krueger. <laughs> you know, it'll be something like that. That'll summarize my entire career. And, and I think for Robert, it'll be, it's the man who played Freddy Krueger. You know, it, um, no matter what else you do in life, it's just one of those, one of those things that the film has its way with you. <laughs> I didn't know he directed Vampire in Brooklyn. Vampire in Brooklyn, you see, that's that was right before Scream, though. So yeah. obviously he's not going to play with that for much longer after you know, as soon as Scream comes out, forget about Vampire in Brooklyn. But I had no idea. That have you actually that. seen this though? Yeah, yeah. Was it any good? Mm, not really. <laughs> for centuries, they have roamed the earth fearsome creatures of the night, endlessly seeking to satisfy an unyielding hunger. Now, the world's last vampire is about to encounter something infinitely more terrifying than himself. Brooklyn. Interesting. I've been stabbed and I've been hanged. Even broken on the rack once, but I've never been shot before. It kind of itches a little. Paramount Pictures presents. If you're hungry, I'll run you down to KFC down the street and hit you off with a two piece. I already had Italian. Eddie Murphy. Do I look like I would bite you? Angela Bassett. You bet not. Not after the day I've had. Eddie Murphy. Everything! Come on! Move it! Yeah, yeah, right. There's a lot of love in this room. Look at this. And Eddie Murphy. Bottom line, brother and sister, what I'm trying to tell you tonight is that evil is good. Let me hear y'all say it. Evil, evil is good. good. Right. If he fails here... Oh. Quickest way to a woman's heart is through the church. It's actually through the rib cage, but that's a bit messy. Being undead, you got the dropsies. Won't be worth living. I'm a cop. If you uh, try anything funny, I'll shoot you. Women. Vampire in Brooklyn. I would love to have you for dinner. Eddie Murphy thinking he's smooth and yeah being, being a vampire and again I think he plays a few different parts in it <laughs> does he yeah oh, was, like this, was this the start of his thing his... no I think um, coming to America was the start of that in playing doing different in, yeah because yeah, you know in like the in the, the barber shop he plays like virtually everyone in the barber shop Oh, I never. Do you know what? I have not seen that film in such a long time. Yeah, you know, like the Jewish guy. Yeah, I said he's happy. Oh my god! Yeah, well, I, I love that film. It's a really funny. Yeah, film. Like, it's a great film. I think that's probably because he got such a thing going on with that. that yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, Vampire in Brooklyn. That's well, very different. Very different of film. Angela Bassett's okay, but um, yeah, it's a very unusual film for Wes Craven to do. Don't you think? Yeah. Um, People on the stairs. You like that movie? I don't mind it. I think it's just completely nuts. Yeah, I like Ving Rhymes in it. Yeah, Ving, yeah. Ving Rhymes, Rhymes, yeah. Ving Rhymes. <laughs> and the kid's cool. good. And, and the, the that's got the guy of Twin Peaks in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, the film is very. It, it's kind of like Twin Peaks in that respect, where uh, the actors are kind of just reactants to things going on, and uh, it, it's it's kind of odd because you kind of don't fully feel it. And I was just sitting there watching it, and I just got bored and fed up because I was like thinking, "There's this this hands that are just coming out of the thing, and yeah. the they, they focused on the dogs way too much." Well, again, it's a film I've seen for a while. I remember when I watched it, I enjoyed it. You know, I thought it was just fun. It wasn't. Scary. It kind of reminded it me of it right of a cheap Stephen King TV movie. Right. Okay. That's kind of how it felt, and I thought mm, this is this is what 1991 was about. Though it was kind of like horror films were pretty awful. Uh, in the early 90s they really were I mean uh, Stephen King TV movies were the only thing that we had to hold on to right and of course 
the last dregs of all these Halloween remakes. And I'm, I'm going to find out horror films 1991 now to prove you wrong. Oh! Because that's how much of a knob I am. Okay, well, I can do this. In every neighborhood, there is one house that adults whisper about and children cross the street to avoid. Now, Wes Craven, creator of A Nightmare on Elm Street, takes you inside. Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Horror films in 1991. I think it was a really shocking era. Okay. Sounds of the <laughs> That's not a horror film. That's a that's it's a. It's got horror elements. It's got horror, it? horror elements, of course. All oh, right. Okay. Let's look at this. Body parts. Bad. Uh, child Freddy's play. dead. The final. It starts with Freddy's dead. No climax there. Subspecies. Puppet master. Eh. Yeah. Popcorn. The Sometimes horror. they come back. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was like I say. It's a, it's remakes. Oh, I love necromantic films. Do you? Oh God, yeah. Necromantic. Yeah. Women having sex with dead bodies, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. The Howling Five, the uh, Howling Six, sorry, Scanners Two, um, yeah, basically, okay. Let me just say, it was the era of unoriginal. Cape Fear is not a horror. Ernest um, scared stupid. Ernest scared stupid. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I can't really say that. But maybe, maybe we need to look through the, find out when the era of shitty horror movies started and where it ended where was the because uh, are we still in the um, everything has to be as gory as possible era right era. now where we were in the body sh- uh, we, we kind of went back into body shock again because yeah, all like the 80s with the video nasties and I suppose early 90s we were just yeah. starting to come out of that we're getting all these cheap video nasties still coming out yeah it was it was about video nasties and children of the night um, there's nothing out there I mean so there's a lot of films I haven't heard of Ghoulies and I as a kid it's enjoyable but maybe right let's think of this so we do as a lot of people like this do I'll do one for the studio and then I'll do one for me so maybe you did that and then so we could do Scream hello hello who is this you tell me your name I'll tell you mine why do you want to know my name I want to know who I'm looking at Is playing a deadly game. It all began with the scream over 911. Someone who's seen one too many scary movies. Do you like scary movies? What's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a scary movie. Don't answer the phone. <laughs> Don't open the door. Scream, rated R. So that is a great film. It is, and it 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 did two things. It, it was scary. Yeah. And it was very satirical. Satirical, yeah. and it was also meta as well. Yeah. Um, so three things. <laughs> three things. Let's, um, let's find a fourth. Yeah, the, uh, um, it, it, it destroyed kind of, Nev, Cam- Nev Campbell's career. No, I don't think it really. Uh, she I think didn't do anything after that. She, she didn't have much of a. She she's an indie film uh, person. She's better in indie. Well, before that, she was in what was that? Oh, family planning. No, um, n- nine of four. No, a party of six. Party of five. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it was the most depressing series yeah. I've ever seen in my life. I used to watch it at college, right? Uh, we'd have. We'd have a few drinks Saturday night, wake up with a hangover, put Party 5 on and be depressed. The first episode starts with mum and dad dying in a plane crash. Joy. It was the most... A, 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 a brother gets cancer and oh, the, the thing worst is, things happen. It was so depressing. Yeah. and So Scream was a hoot. It was. For her, um, it was a, a big chance to make money. And so she's her life is kind of secured in that way, in that respect. But in terms of output, she hasn't really. I mean, in a way, Jamie Lee Curtis was her career was a lot stronger. Your God, yeah. As yeah, the screen, screen cream, she screen, screen cream, <laughs> scream queen. No, you had that 80s. cream that you put on that really burned. <laughs> That's oh. just she invented it. But uh, 
But yeah, there was... she did a few films after yeah. that, like um, Wild. Wild things. Wild things were yeah. Really... Where she's getting it on, and that kind of ruined her career, I think, because she, then she did a lot of films yeah. where she got naked. Yeah, she also yeah. There was a, another film, indie film, where she got naked a yeah, lot, um, where she in the shower, and I was kind of like, well, you know, you don't. It was really... a really boring film, apart from those bits. Yeah, and and, and her bits. Apart yeah, from her, her bits. Bit, her bits are nice. Her 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 bit. <laughs> her bit. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh come on, you know I don't watch that shit. Why not? Too scared. No. No, it's just, what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. Here comes. What? Oh, what is all wrong? Why do they do that? It's too red. Wait, here comes another. Here, here. Ooh! Yes! Ooh! yes! Predictable. I knew he was going to bite it. How can you watch this shit over and over? Shh! see breasts. I want to see Jamie Lee's breasts. When do yes. we see Jamie yes. Lee's breasts? Breasts? Not until Trading Places in 83. Jamie Lee was always the virgin in horror movies. She never showed her tits until she went legit. Could afford a decent pair. <laughs> What'd you say? That's why she always outsmarted the killer in the big chase scene at the end. Only virgins can do that. Don't you know the rules? What rules? You don't... Jesus Christ, you don't know the rules? Uh, have an aneurysm, why don't you? There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. Big no no! Big no! I'm a dead man. Keep him in popcorn. Sex equals yes. death, okay? Number two, you can never drink or do drugs. <laughs> no, the sin factor. It's a sin. It's an extension of number one. And number three, never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. I'm getting another beer. You want one? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Oh! You see, you push the laws and you end up dead. Okay, I'll see you in the kitchen with a knife. The first one had a big impact on me, I can yeah. tell you. I, I actually got the big cinema poster. The massive one with all the faces filled in with into the word scream. Yeah, and it was my. Uh, I had it on a wall. It was. That's what, massive. You, that's what you do, post. <laughs> <laughs> I had it on the wall, and it was with me throughout. I mean, I bought the soundtrack. Um, I had a thing with the screen films. I had to get the special edition VHS. Yes, because it was widescreen. It was widescreen, and I had to because I was talking about scream with my mate the other day. I think I took a picture of it, but then I deleted it. Well done. Well done, Andy. But, but um, yeah. Yeah, it, it had a really... The cover of it was Drew Barrymore's face, like, but like a sort of weird version, you know, like a, a sort of drawing of it. It, it just, They just look brilliant. Yeah. You know, no one really sort of pays attention to having really good covers anymore. No, no, no. no. I mean, that, that was a lost art in when, you know, films in the 80s and 90s, I think they kind of killed them off after digital. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, the first film, I, I I remember being a big fan with my friend Lee Thorne, who was a huge fan. Yeah. Um, super fan. We, we both kind of, like, really enjoyed talking about the screen films and uh, strangely enough I, I actually went on a date with a girl who um, I I fancied because she kind of looks a little bit like Helen Hunt <laughs> there's, a, there's a connection to this and uh, I, I kind of you know didn't find her that interesting she didn't find me that interesting and we kind of found a way of ditching each other by she took me to a nightclub that had a, a special shoe um, requirement and I had uh, white trainers on and so I couldn't go in but she continued to go in. It's like, oh, sorry, I guess this is where the date ends. All it was right, really, okay. it was kind of like the worst date ever kind of a situation. And so I thought, great, because we walked past the blockbuster <laughs> earlier that evening, and all I could think of from that moment was, damn, they've got an X rental version of Screaming there. Yeah. And so I bought, I went, I came back and I bought the X rental copy of Scream and I took it home and I watched it for the first time in the house and I was like, yes. Oh, I remember those days we could buy an X rental video. Yes, X rental. Video. But the the, the early ones used to be really expensive when they when they first came out and it's like a Die Hard with a Vengeance. I remember it being twenty pound, straight up price, twenty quid. Um, and usually they're, they're like nine ninety nine when you buy them, but it was like it was almost like maybe three or four weeks after it had been a rental yeah. they were putting out the exclusive re X rentals yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I remember Die Hard with a Vengeance was one of them and Scream was this other one where I spent 15 bucks 
yeah. on an ex-rental, hardly used though. And uh, and and you know what? Forget the date. This this is where it's at. This is you know this is this is my entertainment, and it was great. Yeah. Well, me and Matt used to watch it the VHS over and over again. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. It was. It's and um, you know, and I never owned a costume though. Never actually got. Um, oh, I did. Did you? Yeah, I've got loads of pictures of me with a screen mask on. Oh man, because I never did that. Never, never ran out. I had one of those that glowed up in the dark as well. It's one of those things where I kind of felt like yeah, it felt a bit sinister wearing it as if I might just suddenly become a psycho killer and that was the beauty of the film though especially with some of the later ones when everyone's dressed up with the mask on and you have no idea <laughs> it's who the cinema the, everybody yeah. in the theatre was number two wasn't yeah, it, it was they were two. all dressed up and they went to go and see Slash yeah and then where she gets killed well right. where she gets stabbed and then she's sort of like oh, and everyone just thinks it's part Cheer. of her and cheering her and she just drops down dead and then yeah. everyone's a bit weird then but that's great. It's a great way of playing with that convention, you know. Yeah, and it makes people makes people realize how how being desensitized to it kind of is a violence in itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that uh, you know you're not really, you know, that you can actually be be killed right there in public. That's a that's a big fear for me. It's like the idea of actually being in a public place and somebody just stabbing you. Yeah. And nobody knowing because exactly, you're just because still it's... sitting there and it's like uh, it's weird. But Weird. everyone wearing the same mask. mask. It could be anybody. Yeah. And not one of them was John Malkovich. Not one of them was John Malkovich. <laughs> Malkovich. Malkovich. <laughs> so, screen films, yeah, always a hit. Always a hit. Yeah. And, but yeah. The, the, as, as you say, the, the story kind of wears it a little bit thin as they go along. And, you know, they had Lee Schreiber come back as kind of like this guy who gets killed in the third. Yeah, um, you never know whether to trust him, do you? Yeah, and, you know. And, it, and that's it it's kind of like yeah um, but Niv Campbell had long hair short hair long hair she did the Tom Cruise thing <laughs> she did yeah that's her, her the screen films are her Mission Impossible she does all her own stunts as well oh but that time when she went down the stairs yeah that was all her <laughs> that was all her and I did have a, a thing about her in the first film but it kind of yeah there's, there's something about her that as she came and became popular and was making more money in Hollywood there was something behind that thing that felt a bit false I just couldn't let me, but yeah. again the screen films kicked off again another teenage slasher craze you got they I know did. what you did last summer yes it did but yeah. it, everyone seemed to miss the point of Scream yeah Scream was a satire about, about slasher it. films and then they thought and oh the sort of, yeah and then they, people thought oh because that's the brilliance of it it was scary as well as being a clever satire. Yeah. So everything else, the like urban legends. Yeah, um, precisely. Those things, Final Destination, kind of. It was took again it a lot. Bit yeah, it's a bit different, different direction. But it's still teenage. Yeah, teenagers once again coming together, and I think it did revitalize the genre. Even though you know, when you are revitalizing a genre, you're gonna get a pile of shit coming out at the same time as the the nuggets that come through. Yeah, yeah. it happens so, all the yeah, time. Like the moment someone's hit, uh, the studios will make a million of them. The only the only thing that didn't do that was Titanic. It was a... there wasn't a suddenly a surgence of boat movies sinking. No, did no, you notice that? Did uh, you notice the Titanic that actually didn't didn't create anything uh, other than it killed you can't, the, though, can it you? killed the three hour flick. It killed the three hour flick to a certain extent because in the nineties people were actually enjoying the Dances with Wolves, the uh, JFK, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Wire. I think the Kevin Costner three hour flick was was a huge thing. But and Titanic, Titanic is, a, is an event. It actually yeah. happened. But you no, can't stop making <laughs> fictitious. You they remade Poseidon, I guess. You tell people on Twitter who haven't got a clue that Titanic is actually a real ship. There, there is a phenomenon out there known as as. Dumb, ch the dumb kids who think Titanic was was not real that it actually they're, they're shocked when somebody tells them it was actually a, based on a real boat. They honestly go nuts. They think you kid, no way. I just found out that Titanic was actually a real boat, and it's like yeah. It's the dumb and dumber thing, isn't it? He was walking out of that bar and he looks at that picture and it says "Man walked on moon." He's like, what? No way. And then walks out. <laughs> it's just that, isn't it? So yeah, scream. Uh, after that, Wes Craven made his money in Hollywood finally he, he put his mark out there so so what, after the Scream films what else is he what after else, the what Scream films what was his last film here's okay let's just get to the end of his credits 
Uh, da, 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 da. This is a lovely sound that you just love. Okay, so we go Scream 3. Um, oh, of yeah, you had a cameo with Jane Silent and Bob Strike back. Jane and Silent Bob, yeah, because I think it's probably because of the Scream 3 thing. Yeah, yeah. because uh, that happened. Um, cutting Edge, Dracula. He did a lot of Dracula films. There was uh, Dracula 2000, then Dracula 2, and then Dracula 3. Um, but he was just producing them, wasn't he? Yeah. Red Eye. Uh, have you seen that one? Is that yeah. the one on the plane? Yeah, I think so. Director. We're looking for the ones that he directed. Red Eye was the one he directed there. I haven't seen that one either. I haven't really been much of a fan of his work uh, outside of um, franchise. It's, it, he's kind of You don't know he's directed a lot of films. Diary of the Dead, he did something with. I think it was like voice. a voiceover, wasn't yeah. it? Last Health on the Left produced. He produced um, the remakes as well, which is interesting. Yeah, money, isn't it? Yeah. It was in a castle. Swing TV series, I think, was the last thing he worked on as a producer. Nobody puts on a mask and commits a murder like that just once. The real question is, who's next? I am scared every time I get a phone call, every time I get a text. My life is not a game. Yes, it is. And when I decide it's over, you will lose. Oh, 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 let's play a game. I am the predator. I'm gonna make you my prey. But every killer is someone's friend. Oh, 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 I'm coming straight for your heart. There is no way out of this. When I get next to you, I'm gonna ah! tell you the part. Everybody's a suspect, including us. Wait, where are you on that list? Duh. I'm making the list. Nice resting creep face. Back at ya. Thank you. I wanna see what happens. Oh, holy Manson family album. It's a genuine killer's lair. Why is your DNA on the inside of the mask? I cannot just keep lying to Emma. Lying to me about what? Emma, this is getting insane. Karma doesn't just happen. Sometimes you have to take it in your own hand. I said turn that off. You like liquid so far? Yeah. You know, aside from all the murders, it's nice. This is all a test, and when I fail, people will die. The killer's here. No, 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 come on. No. Oh, ah! It ends with you. Scream. All new Tuesdays at 10. Any, any reports on Scream the TV series? Is it something that's not over here? I've not seen any of it yet. No, no. We'll definitely check it out though. Yeah, I think it's something that's um, something that I'd like to see because they're, apparently they're uh, dedicating the next episode to Wes Craven's memory. So It's the right thing to do. Yeah. It's, it's got to be done. Yeah. So, I mean, he, he had a big influence. Um, oh, that was his... Um, I remember his documentary was about Deep Throat. That was his, the, the thing he did Oh, he did that? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and there was, like, a rumour saying that he actually was an actor in Deep Throat. Really? Mm. But, you know, that's who we say. Well, that's wonderful music you're playing <laughs> over there. It's definitely not picking up. <laughs> so, free jazz going on over there. Free, ja free jazz and eclectic. Um, it sounds like a, someone who's fallen asleep at the car horn. <laughs> you know, with the, <laughs> the steering wheel. Like, mm. <laughs> Aspen, you're a car crash. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Wes um, Craven. You know, a great, a great career. A real good advocate for horror cinema. And yeah. um, will be sadly missed. Yeah, I think without him... The horror genre probably would have was struggled a bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so yeah, like Pretty... two of the biggest franchises in recent horror yeah. memory would be Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream. Yeah, and that's uh, that's saying a lot. And um, I think um, sadly missed. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. So yeah. What can you say? We're bad at endings as well. We haven't really talked about us being bad at endings. No, that much. terrible at beginning and ending. So what 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 can we do? Should we just go into a dream? Should we just disappear off into one of Freddy's nightmares? I think we should end it with a lovely quote about horror films from Wes Craven. I think the lesson is that you should not put the hook in the door unless you're absolutely sure the car is going nowhere.